My wife paid the wedding photographer extra to not take pictures of her. My wife has always been self-conscious in front of the camera. She would erase every snapshot I took of her when we initially began dating. After a few years, we've been dating for six years, she agreed to a few provided no one else saw them. She too does not have any social media profiles. We tied the knot two weeks ago. We had a tiny wedding with no honeymoon, but it was lovely. My wife seemed to be gorgeous in content. She seldom dresses up, and this was the first time I'd seen her in a dress. So it was a pleasant surprise. She hired the wedding photographer since he was a friend of hers. We both agreed that we preferred candid shots over staged ones, so we instructed him to just shoot candids. We received the images earlier this week, and they were fantastic, but none of them included her. She said that she had paid him extra to not photograph her. She didn't want to worry about someone photographing her aunt. Her big day. Our family are requesting wedding photos and I'm at a loss for what to say. Also, I'm extremely and I can't seem to let this go, despite the fact that it's been a couple of days. What should I do? My wife apologized for hurting my emotions, but she has no idea how unhappy I was. I wanted a photograph of my wife so that I could remember how she looked on that important day. Isn't it a much to ask? Story 2. Please accept my apologies if this is badly worded. I had never used Reddit before, but I was discussing the matter with my son, who does not live with me, and he advised I make this post. I've always been an introverted guy, and my dream night is one spent quietly in front of the television with my wife. I enjoyed raising my three children and was sorry to see them go, but I was also relieved that they were living their own lives and I could enjoy the tranquility that I hadn't had in a long time. My children are all married now, and my oldest, 32 male, is having a happy life with his wife and children. However, my daughter rapidly lost her job and was unable to find another, so she depended on her husband's, 31 male, salary while raising three children, six female, five male, and three female, despite the fact that it was not financially practical. They were unable to maintain themselves after falling behind on their rent, so they all moved in with my wife and myself. Then my other son and his wife, 26 female, had two children, four male, one female, and made a number of questionable financial mistakes, including purchasing an expensive automobile from an untrustworthy individual. The automobile was stolen, and the police took it away from my son, who had spent a lot of money on it. They, too, were unable to pay their bills and care for their children, so they moved in with us. My wife greeted them enthusiastically. My wife, like me, appreciates the peaceful life, but she is also an extrovert who enjoys having the kids and grandchildren around. Yet this is a nightmare. I thought my days of being a parent and chasing after kids were gone, but it seems that I am doing it more than ever. At my age, I shouldn't have to put up with this. I've already done my duty as a parent, and I shouldn't have to do it again. I can't read a book for five minutes without being interrupted by a crying toddler. It's terrible to have 11 people jammed into one home, even if it's a huge house. Even going to the bathroom is a chore since I constantly have to wait for many members of my family to go first. What irritates me is that everyone else seems to be okay with this arrangement. I know they're all seeking for work but I don't see them putting in the extra effort to locate someplace else to live. I'm at my wit's end, and when I attempted to speak to my wife about it, she was shocked, stating that you don't stop being a parent after your children leave home, and I owed it to them to support them in their time of need. I'm not sure whether she's correct, but I can't bear it any longer. What should I do? Story 3. I, 26 male, smacked my GF, 26 female, hand when she wouldn't let go. My girlfriend and I have been together for just about three years, and apart from the odd argument, everything has been going swimmingly. On either end, there has never been any physical or verbal abuse. I did, however, slap my GF hand last night when she wouldn't let go. Prior to this, my GF had just returned home from work at 9.00 p.m., and we had exchanged our standard pleasantries and niceties. She was aware that I had had a difficult day at work and was willing to let me vent, but by the time I was halfway through, she had obviously stopped paying attention and was browsing through Facebook on her phone. 
I did call her out on it after I saw she wasn't genuinely paying attention to anything I said that lasted more than 30 seconds or so since her focus tends to move elsewhere. That got me furious, and then my GF walked to our bedroom to lay down with the lights. Turned out, she doesn't really live at my apartment, so she had to go home soon. I had entered the room shortly after, and when I turned on a low light, she told me that I needed to turn it off, which I did. Nevertheless, I didn't want to be in a dark room yet, so I exited the room. I returned about 15 minutes later and chose to bear with the darkness since all I wanted to do was be close to her and spend time with her. This is where the events leading up to the slap took place. I was resting next to her when she began softly touching my tummy. I'm on the fitter side, but I certainly have a little pudge down there. So there's definitely plenty to grip. The issue is that I have often voiced my apprehension about having my stomach touched, as well as my concerns about it. I begged her to stop, and she did not. I asked her to stop again, and she continued to place her finger in my belly button, prompting me to sit up and leave since she did not respect my boundaries. She then grabbed my shirt, and as I attempted to pull away, and she wouldn't let go, I instinctively slapped her hand hard and loudly. I knew it had wounded her, and I felt terrible for doing it. I know that violence is never the solution, and that she was probably simply hoping for comfort from me, and that I wasn't in a reciprocating mood at the time. I removed myself from the situation, and she packed her belongings and prepared to depart soon after. On two different times, I conveyed my sorrow for my conduct, and she stated and reassured me that everything was okay, that she wasn't unhappy, and that we were fine. I think my major issue is that I still feel terrible for turning to a physically violent action in the circumstance. I'm worried that I may have opened a violent door or something because if I resorted to a slap, I would escalate in another situation. I am a fully non-violent person who has never harmed someone in anger or frustration, but I used to have rage outbursts when I was younger which resulted in several holes in my wall. I know my GF stated everything was okay and she is fine, but I'm still stuck on it and don't know how to go beyond the remorse and worry I feel about the action without fully upsetting my GF by apologizing a thousand more times or just taking space to ponder. I'm not sure what I'm looking for in terms of advice, but any help would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. Now look at some comments. I've been in a scenario identical to yours previously. I was upset, had a bad day, and ended up striking my partner's hands impulsively despite warning them many times that I didn't want to be touched. I apologized, and they promptly removed and apologized as well. I believe there is a distinction between instinctively behaving as a result of your boundaries being breached and acting in anger, and I believe she recognizes this as well. If it helps you feel better, this happened a year ago, and we never gave it any attention. I understand that this is just a snapshot of your relationship, but considering that you said, you never pay attention to anything I say longer than 30 seconds, it seems that your relationship may have long-term compatibility concerns. Only you know whether this is true or not, but I will say that nothing you said in your article, on either your or her end, should happen in a healthy and happy partnership. It might be that, but it could also be a mental health issue like ADHD, which would be really beneficial to learn about if that's the case. By learning about our own, and each other's mental health concerns, my spouse and I have discovered new, healthy methods to communicate. Also, even if you're in a relationship, she might be guilty of pestering you or improperly touching you. She accomplished both.